Hi and welcome to another tutorial from Blender Insight and this time I was thinking that we should do this scale pattern that we can use on like an animal or armor or perhaps as a pattern for the roof or something like that. So let's go right into it and we start as usual with a texture coordinate so shift A input texture coordinate and I would like to be able to add a lot of scales so I add a scale so we write scale here and to split it up we then add a fraction so shift D and then we will find fraction here and we can just put this to like five or something like that and if I take this to the surface you can now see that we have squares all over the place and uh, this is a symmetrical pattern, so I would like the darkest point to be in the center here. And then we do this famous move with subtract and multiply. So shift D to duplicate, shift D to duplicate, change this to subtract, change this to multiply. This should be 0 0.5 and this should be 2. And I don't use the two last ones since I use UV, which only have the X and Y. And then I would like everything to be the same on the edges, which means that right now it's negative one, positive one. And I would like everything to be positive. So I will use an absolute. So shift D, put that in and then select this to an absolute. And this is like the base thing that we do in 99% of my tutorials. So after that it's up to us now to make this uh, pattern here with the scales. So one way to make these nice shapes here is to use the power node. I think I made a tutorial in that how you easily can tweak uh, the lines just using the power. So we will use that here. Uh, but before we use that, we need to separate it. So we add a separate XYZ like this. And then we can just put in uh, an uh, add here, I think would be great. And then we do the power in the Y direction. So we put in a power down here, uh, change it to power. And I think that would be working great but now I would like to see it so we have it here and right now we don't see so much we see these lines here but if we just put in a less than here then we can get something that is black and white and we can see the shapes here so we press shift D and we put in a less than and now you see the shapes here so we can now change this into different things here and we change this to be one on the less one, less than. So we are here and now you can see we can now shape it really nice to get it uh, similar to what I have here. So I have it like that. So now we have already done like 30% of this. The next thing we should do is to make this part a bit uh, brighter and this part a bit darker so we get this uh, shadow that goes in here and that is useful for two things so one is just to get this shadow and it looks nice but the other thing that is more vital is that when we darken this then we can make that part disappear when we add the next layer of scale here because then the next layer of scale will be brighter and if we use a maximum we will then mask out the bottom part so that is how we get everything to vanish here so we don't see both this and the scale here so let us do that part by using uh, what are called uh, separate so we can take the separate and we can duplicate this shift d and we can take it from here before we do this uh, center part because right now i don't want to have the starting point in the center i would like to have it 
in the bottom. So if I take this Y here to the surface, you can see now that this is what I would like to have. But I would like it to be reversed, so I have the bright part in the bottom. So I just add a subtract here. So Shift A, convert to math, and I do a subtract here of one, and now I get it in this direction. So now we get the brighter part here and the darker part here, and that will work very nice. So we just take the result that we have here and multiply that with this. So Shift D, put that in, multiply, and take the subtract here. And now we get these leaning things that we would like to have. So that is the base, and we start with that. And, and now we can take everything we have and just make a node group out of it, because the only thing we should do now is repeat this, but half up and a half on the side. So we copy this, or we select it, and then press Ctrl G to make a node group out of it. And right now we don't add anything, we just take the group input, we just press tab to get out. Uh, we can make this a little bit smaller, and uh, we can name this to something, uh, scale layer, perhaps something like that, scale, no not scale, scale, scale layer. So now we have that. So then we copy this one, Shift D, and as I said, we should then move this a bit. So to make it movable, we need to put in some information. And I think it could be good to have the scale outside here so we can reach that. So I just press Tab, and then I take the scale out as well. So drag from scale to the group input, and then select group input and go back again. So we get the scale here. It's easier to work in that way. Uh, so we take the UV here and now we take an input. So Shift A, input, value, and we can put in the scale here. And now I need to do the move here. So I can just add uh, Shift A and then get converter, vector math, add here. and now is the eternal question how much should we offset it with and as i said it's a half on each direction which means that we can take this value and we can do like this so shift a convert to combine xyz first of all so we put that and then we do some math here so we do a divide and we can put this to the bottom and then just put this to x, this to y, and now I add a maximum here. So Shift A, convert the math, so you can see both, and put in a maximum. So, and as you can see, this works nice, a half on the divide, and then if we move the value here, it only moves here, but that's easily fixed because we are not changing here. So we should put this scale to the scale here, and we should put this scale to the scale here. And now everything works nicely, as you can see. So this is the base. And from this, we can then change things and make this out of it. And we can also change the pattern a bit and so on. So now we can go in for all the luxury stuff here. So we select the scale layer, press tab, and what we would like to get out is the power here to change the pattern. But if you go below or go to one or below one, it doesn't look good. So we should have something that limit this so it never goes below, let's say, 1.1. .1. So then we can just add a max here. So Shift A, convert the math, put that in here and change this to max. See so if we can find max. Here we have max. And we change one value to 1.1. .1. So now, whatever we put in here, it will never go below 1.1. .1. So now we can take this as an output here. And we can change the value. So we get the group, double click, and 
call it shape. So then we know that this is the shape. So now we have that in and the next step to make this look nice is to change it also in the X direction. But in this case, I would like it to be uh, both darker on this side as well as this side. So that means that we now should use um, the separate that we have here, which is after the absolute because here everything is centered. So instead of using that one, we use this one to make this pattern here. So we use this and I think we could use a power here as well to be able to do like a soft transition between those things. So we add a power in the end, Shift D. Uh, we put in a power, so we can change it here. But now you can see we, we change it in this direction and I would like it to go in the other direction as well. But this direction is good if we want to have like more shadows. So we keep it, but we add, uh, I think we go in here and we add a multiply like this. If I now put that into the power, then I will change the power in the X direction. So if I put it like this, and drag it out, you can see now it changes in the X direction, even if this is in the Y. So now we get like a V shape here that we can play with. But regardless how much I take it up, I only shrink it uh, on the sides here and that part will always be bright. So that is not perfect. And to then move that down a bit, we can just add uh, add to it. So if I press shift D, put that in here and put it to an add, you can see now that I can get this lower down. So I can shrink it and I can change this and by that I can then get the shape that I want. So uh, we can put some values in here, 4.5 or something and I don't know uh, what we should put here, 1.2, 1.3. Uh, so we have something to start with, and then we can take out this uh, value here, and then we can call that uh, offset in the y direction. Uh, no, not that one. That is uh, the other one. This is uh, the one that got the shadows. So we can call this uh, contrast shadow instead. Contrast shadow. And this one is what is offset in the Y direction. So we take this one and drag it here and call that offset Y. So now we have that in as well. Then we can go out and uh, we have these two, so we then do one for the values here uh, for the contrast and one for the offset. And since both of these should be the same, we can really do like this, that we drag this out a bit. And then we just take all of this and do another new uh, node group out of this as well. So Ctrl G and that will then be able easier to, uh, to change because then we can just take the contrast here uh, or the shape first. Take the shape here and then we drag the shape to the same place and we take the contrast and we drag the contrast to the same and we take the offset and we drag the offset and we can all use the scale as well since we already have it. So we just drag it like uh, we could take, uh, I think it's better to take the scale from here because then we get the name directly. So we drag scale here and we drag scale here to this one. So, and the only thing that we have left now is this little value that also should go to the scale here. So then we don't have to think so much. Everything that is named 
Vector goes to vector, everything that is named shape goes to shape, everything that is named contra shadow goes to contra shadow, and so on. So now I can just press tab and I have one li little node group here that I just can call scales. And then it's very easy for me to change the shape. So we get it like this, which is perfectly exactly like this. We can change the contrast if we want to raise it or decrease it. We can change the offset if we want more shadow, have like more gap between these or perhaps less gap. We can also make a new nice pattern even if it's perhaps not perfect as scale, but you have the possibility and you can scale it as you want to as well here. So a nice little node out of this where you can make this pattern with some flexibility. So hopefully you learned something in uh, this session as well and I do as usual say uh, bye for now and see you later.